In this video, we describe the role of interrupts and interrupt service routines. So we already know that a computer system executes programs. The processor fetches, decodes, and executes instructions over and over. While this is occurring, other devices and applications may require the processor's attention. They need a way to signal to the processor that they require this attention, and that is what we call an interrupt. Think about it this way. When a student wants to ask a question, ideally they raise their hand, signalling to the teacher that they need attention, thus generating an interrupt. We have now evolved our understanding of the fetch, decode, execute cycle to effectively add an additional step. Fetch, decode, execute, and check for new interrupts. Interrupts present a problem. The processor will need to stop executing its current program to run the code for the interrupt, known as the interrupt service routine. Remember, the CPU contains registers that hold data currently being handled. This includes the program counter pointing to the address the next instruction to be executed the current instruction register, which actually holds the current instruction, and various other registers such as the MAR, MBR, and general purpose. The interrupt service routine is simply another program with a set of instructions that need to be fetched, decoded, and executed to carry out whatever the operations of the interrupt are. That means the contents of the program counter need to be changed to point to the address for the first instruction of the interrupt. When the interrupt is complete, how will the processor know to continue the previously executing program? Well, when an interrupt is received, the values held in the registers are copied into a data structure in memory known as the stack. These values are pushed onto the stack in a stack frame, effectively saving them for later retrieval. The interrupt can now be executed. Once it is complete, we pop the frame off the top of the stack, and this allows us to retrieve the previous values for the original program, load them back into the processor's registers, and carry on executing the original program where we'd left off. Now, in this situation, an interrupt has come along. The previous program has been suspended and the data has been stored in a stack frame. The interrupt is now executing. Let's call it interrupt service routine A. While the processor executes interrupt service routine A, another higher priority interrupt comes along. The stack system handles these perfectly. It suspends interrupt service routine A, pushes the register contents onto the top of the stack, and starts executing interrupt service routine B. Once B has completed executing, we pop the frame off the top of the stack, and in doing so, we retrieve the values for interrupt service routine A, load them back into the processor's registers, and carry on executing it. And once A has completed executing, we pop the frame off the top of the stack, and in doing so, we retrieve the previous values for the original program load those back in registers, and carry on executing the original program when we left off. So as you probably noticed, interrupts always have higher priority than normal programs. Say your computer stops responding and you want to open the task manager or shut your PC down. The processor is caught in a situation it can't resolve. Without being able to interrupt the cycle by pressing Control alt delete or the power button, the only way to recover from this situation is by pulling the plug. This means that different interrupts have different priorities. And although you don't need to memorize these, here are some examples of various interrupts and their priorities. Some of the top priorities or the most severe ones are examples of power failures. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What causes an interrupt to the CPU and how is it handled? 